has the less than 60. So my vote goes to the another party, hmm. which I may not be liking. Yeah. Now, there are different four counting systems. So in most of these counting systems, the voter also has to give a second or a third choice. Well, then you so have. it is, I mean, through a scientific system that the votes are reallocated. It is not simply at the whims and fancies of the election commission. Yeah. No? Uh, there is a counting system, the horn counting system that is followed in uh, uh, the Netherlands. There are also uh, the uh, Mayahare uh, electoral system. There are two more. Uh, it will be a lot confusing for us in a session, one day session like this. What about if the person doesn't go on behalf of the party but goes as an independent or individual? Yes. Then that, I mean, that, uh, and that individual's vote actually counts for the party in the Netherlands. Yeah, but he doesn't, is it permitted in terms of fighting like independent candidate? Or is it necessary that person has to uh, belong to a party? party. No. I mean, uh, that is the advantage in the Netherlands system and in the New Zealand system. In New Zealand, uh, it is enough that a party has one candidate. So even an independent, without registering a party, can enter the parliament in New Zealand. The threshold is only one candidate. In the Netherlands, the threshold is only 66,000. And it is not fixed. Huh? The, the calculation is total votes divided by 150 seats. That will be the number. Generally, it is 66. And the uh, one candidate, without registering a party, but registering himself as an independent candidate, can contest the elections, but must get 66,000 votes. Uh, see, uh, you are asking, suppose uh, he belongs to a party. No, please repeat the question. So I think you have answered it. Okay. okay thank you. Now let us come to India. Uh, in India, we have uh, a long history of uh, choosing an electoral system, starting from uh, 1930s, when the British wanted to give communal representation. They already foresaw that they won't be here permanently. So they wanted to give communal representation in governance. And so immediately, we had a lot of demands for separate electorate. Baba Saheb Ambedkar also demanded separate electorate. The British gave separate electorate to the Muslims. We give a break or I should stop? OK, I, I, I go fast, is it? OK. So then uh, finally, OK, I shall leave that part. Finally, and, and the, the history starts from there. Then we have the discussions in the Constituent Assembly when we had to formulate our uh, uh, our uh, uh, constitution, two uh, Muslim gentlemen were arguing, members of the Constituent Assembly were arguing for proportionate electoral system. But both of them argued for the Swedish type of uh, uh, proportionate electoral system with a single transferable voting system. That is one of the most complicated electoral systems in the proportionate electoral system. So they, uh, um, because of the shortage of time, I don't read out all that. They have the vehement argumentation. They both of them, Mahbub Ali Beg Sahib and, uh, and um, uh, who is the other one? Vivek, what is that? Yeah, Karimuddin Sahib, both of them were arguing for proportionate electoral system in order to enhance the representative quality of our democracy. But then there were also counter arguments went on for a long time. But finally, Baba Sahib Ambedkar said, if this system, he particularly referred to the single transferable vote proportionate electoral system, if this system had to come to India, people will not understand it. Because at that time, the literacy rate of our country was only 15%. So he said, no, this will not be uh, possible in India. And so the final decision was to go in for the FPTP system. But then finally, Baba Sahib Ambedkar in 1955 had a rethinking on his own decision. And uh, standing as the chairperson of the National Federation of the SEs, 
He passed a resolution on August 27, 1955, saying that what we need in India is not reserved seats, what we need in India is not separate electorate, what we need in India is an electoral system with a multi-member constituency. This is a very clear resolution that he has passed and it is available in the first volume of his writing, right? In the second uh, part where he is speaking of the linguistic uh, states. In the manifesto book, we have given the quote at the end. Next one. And the next one. Oh, we will run. Yeah, this is very important and I think probably we'll stop there. Common misgivings about the proportionate electoral system is many people during the, I have gathered this during the many conferences that we conducted in India. People have been asking me these questions. They say that it is good for European countries but not for India. I found that this was more in terms of a reaction uh, to Western uh, countries. But we need to see the merits of the proportionate electoral system without necessarily applying them to Europe. We can def definitely develop a proportionate electoral system that will be suitable for India. There is all, we have all the right and all chance to develop a system that will be uh, tailor-made for our country. Another argumentation has been that it will increase communalism and casteism as it will give representation to each community according to the proportion of, of population. This is a misunderstanding about proportionate electoral system. When we speak of proportionate electoral system, people immediately imagine that each community will be given seats in the parliament according to their number. If there are 8% uh, of uh, Adivasis tribals in India, then 8% of seats in the parliament should be given to them. This is a misconception. It is not right. Proportionality is counted through the votes and not through population. This we must understand. So therefore, uh, that argumentation is real, comes from a misunderstanding of proportionate electoral system. Proportionate electoral system is percentage of votes and percentage of seats. And there it is. So parties, communities will have to really start their parties and increase the percentage of votes for their parties which will be hugely advantageous to their communities. But then the win-win situation and the bargaining power of each uh, party is what makes democracy meaningful. The third one is that it is a cumbersome process in India to change electoral system. Uh, yeah, but uh, in India now from 15% of literacy, we have come to 65% of literacy. We are in a hugely advantageous situation uh, at the moment and Indian voters are not that dumb. They are quite sharp. This is recognized all over the world. In Germany, as I said earlier, they took three elections to understand their proportionate electoral uh, system. In spite of all their beard and all that, they took three, uh, three elections to understand that. It will take time. It is not a, a ready-made answer to all the uh, problems that India faces. It is not a panacea. It will take time and we have to go through these uh, struggles to make our democracy more meaningful. Um, then another major argumentation is that independence cannot contest in proportionate representation system. I would agree, yes. This was the case years ago, but now many countries, because of this flaw, have changed their system to accommodate also independent candidates. Therefore, when we work on a system for India, definitely we can also see that independents have a chance. And there, the Netherlands model will be a very good lesson for us to learn. Rahat, the next one. 